Hello and welcome back to Fuse Coding, where today I'll be doing parallax animation with some navigation. It's a fairly common effect, but I was actually going around through the Dribble site and I saw an example that looked like something we might want to recreate. I looked at this one here, this is a, a fake Volkswagen one, or Volks, Volkswagen, and it's done by Ali Bayer. And what I find interesting about it is there's a lot of several effects here that we have. We have the, the parallax and the three items scrolling at different speeds. We additionally have the color change in the background. And we have these little dots that get connected. The little dots that connect themselves are actually going to be the one the harder business to achieve. But we can, I think, do most of this. And I'm going to try and go through all of this today. I set up a little bit to start with. Let me get some windows out of the way. And as usual, if you have any questions, please ask. I'll try to put that code on GitHub afterwards. We'll see what resources we use. And I have a link to the resources I use in general. Um, so this is, I was just playing with the app to see where we could get started. And I just did the very basic setup of the project to go through. I set up my assets, my bundles. That's in there to get a JavaScript. <clears throat> I set up the main, main JavaScript code. I'm just gonna start with three products. We can add a few more afterwards. And I don't need the title bit anymore. And it's gonna complain on us. And the main view is where we're going to start. We're going to do the pages here. And we'll start with usual as the client panel. Let's make sure you're not covering up other parts of the screen. This is something I'm actually working on now to get it working correctly on OS X. I mean, it kind of works, but you might want to draw in those areas as well. And so we have to set up the basic screen. So we're going to follow basically his model here. And we'll just view the image itself so I can get it over here and see it. I can only get so much on my screen at once. And, well, we, we can have a basic layout. And when trying to do basic layouts, it's always a bit difficult because you want to be responsive, or I mean, adaptive. And that can sometimes be hard when you have like these fixed, these fixed designs. And a lot of designs, you notice, they, they look really good in one size and you try to change it. So we have to try and think a little bit, how can we fix this out? And what mode does this have? If we look at this screen, we're splitting it into sections. So everything has a fixed area so that for this type of thing you can use you, you can usually use a grid or you can use a dock panel and it really depends on the bit in the middle. Should this bit in the middle size to fill the whole area or do you want it to have the same size as the rest of the stuff? And if you're going to want the size to fill the middle, we can use a dock panel. Otherwise we can use a let's say otherwise we use a grid. And a grid will split up evenly, even though a grid could do the same thing. It really depends on what you want to do. When it's completely vertical, a grid might pass better here. But the key thing we need, first of all, is we have to have a page control, because we're going to put this across multiple pages. And it's, it's very questionable where these pages are, though. So let's actually let's ignore the pages bit for a bit. Oops, there we go. Because the What's really weird in this page is that you have this model item on top. And you notice the color changes behind it. And it's like this is kind of part of the page, but it's kind of floating on top. And this makes the layout a little bit tricky. So we're going to actually try to accommodate this trickiness. We're going to see how we can do this trickiness. We're going to create a panel, first of all. And it's going to have the page control in it. And I'm just going to do this all quickly in one file first. This is something that would be a control you'd split off. And we want to put the at the top of this panel, we're just going to give it a height. We're going to give it another panel for the logo. Panel alignment equals top. And we're just going to give it a height of 200. It's not great, but I don't know, based on the design, what that should be, whether it should be relative or fixed. Image alignment. And here's where we actually want to use a doc panel. And I'll show you why. So the doc panel, the bottom of this text value, will dock at the bottom value. So we're going to copy exactly select item or select article. Sounds better. Because we're going to use clothing as an example. Select article, alignment equals center. And we'll let the image take up the rest of the space. And the image will be image file equals, what do I call this? Logo one. Logo1.png. We'll stick that there. We'll just see how far we get with this so far. 
and I probably got some compile errors. Okay, I forgot to put the assets. I put all my assets in a directory. Oh, let, me, let me get this out of here. I scrolled it over too far. Okay. So we, we don't often have the layout yet, but we have the basic things. So we can start worrying about the other little bits. And let's just start adding the bits. We want to have a type. So this panel would go on a new page. And so the client panel is also a doc panel. So we're going to stick something at the top. We're going to make doc equals top. This will be our title bar. And I don't know if discover is the best word here, but that's what they use there. I, I don't want to set up the icons yet. I just want to do the very, very basics here just so we get something here. And somewhere along the whole thing, as you notice this background, it goes to the whole app. We can do that. Let's just make it gray for now. And I set up the background assets and I call this background.jpg. And I want it stretch mode uniform to fill. This will make sure it fills up the entire space. And the layer background sticks it in the background. And got something wrong. Okay, what I do right here equals don't know what I did. Okay. And all right, so the background, it's a bit grayer than I initially wanted. I actually had some intensity. You can see the little bits of contrast, but it's not really that much. I was hoping to see something. His contrast is very low as well, but we have something. There's a bit of texture, and you just have imagine it's there. And so this logo is actually a bit too big. So let's try to adjust a little bit. The font size of this was a little bigger. Font size equals 22. And logo, we're going to say the overall height of this is only about 180 instead. I'm just going by feeling here what this should be. So now this is too big. Get that. And there's a bit of a margin here. This panel here, this should have a margin at the top, it looks like, which is 0, 0,10. So we're going to stick the margin there. It's a bit further from the top, even more than that. And this image itself also has a margin. It's further away from the text. And you notice how when I add the margin here, it decreases that, the size of it. Because it has a fixed height, adding margin is just going to reduce the area it has available. And that's starting to look to be about the size of the original item. The margin is a bit too big, though. So if I do 25 and then reduce this to 160, and let's put this down to 19. Okay. And this is something that it's simple enough that it'd probably be easier for the graphic designer just to sit down and code this themselves in there, right? I mean, there's no point in having me do that. But so we have that. And we have the basic layout to discover at the top. You would obviously want to go through and do fonts as well. <coughs> I'll just leave them for now. And or do we have a default font now? I thought we had something about maybe a bold. Yeah, we do. Is that actually bold there? Okay, this is, I don't know if we have a, a half bold. Do we have a medium? I don't think we do. I think we just have, we do have a medium. Wonderful. So somebody added medium at some point. Not clear why, but we have medium. And <clears throat> so now let's get to the interesting bit of actually doing this little page at the bottom. Well, we have some boilerplate at the bottom. Maybe I should add that as well. Panel doc equals bottom. And you notice I always add these in panels. You can add the text directly to the top and bottom, but it almost always ends up that when you dock stuff, you want it in a panel because you want to change the background. Text alignment equals center. Well, I had this problem last night too, typing out an issue there. You can do center, and I'm going to say value. Just in legal boilerplate mumbo jumbo at the bottom. And I don't know, we haven't defined that. We'd have to go copy that. And we'll fix the font size. We'll make it small. These font sizes are relative to... Okay, we're going to need some wrapping on this. Oh, I got something to check wrapping. So now you see at the bottom, and it's, it's really big for the mumbo jumbo. How big was it in the other one? Really small. And it should have a little bit of a margin on it. 
Now it's not multiple lines, but we don't care. And it has a little trademark symbol in it, so let's actually go get one of those. Because hey, why not? Um, Unicode trademark. I really just want to show how you, you copy and paste stuff here ever. Registered sign. Um, I always take the two upcase version because I always end up in this site for some reason. It's not that great of a site for it, but it works. And we just call our company Badger Outwear. Badger Outwear. We're not going to see this anywhere else in the display, but let's just stick it down there for fun. And now we have that. Go back there, and what do we have now? So, so it, it starts looking like legal mumble jumble, which is what we wanted to copy. I think they have a link in interlink link, but I mean that text at the bottom, I'm not sure anybody would really read it, so I just have something that's there. Now we have to do the bit in the middle where we have the parts. We have... So this is going to be interesting. These pages. Let's set up the pages. Let's ignore this indicator here first. So what we really have is we have a page control. And I'm going to do it with each now as opposed to pages. There is another way to do it. And so I actually already set this up. Each name you items. This would be enough to see something. Right? This gives us... I'm too close to the edge of the screen. My uh, swiping isn't working. So this would get us enough to see products. And it's obviously not nothing there yet. We don't have the right layout, but these are kind of in the right places. I'm not clear as to why they're this size, though. We'll figure that one out. They should be bigger, but... Oh, because I put a fixed height. That's why they're that height. But what low do we actually want? This one looks like we split the top and the bottom, and we have a spacer in the middle. So this kind of looks like a grid. And I'll stick the whole thing in a page, though, because each one of these is a page. And we'll give a grid of a column count equal 1. And the rows we're going to do, well, this is hard to judge. Does the text take up a fixed area and the top not? So let's make the top take up the auto area. And the middle, we're going to say wherever that indicator is, we're going to leave space at 34. And then we'll leave the bottom one as auto. Then we'll just stick in an empty placeholder. Okay, I didn't quite do what I wanted. An empty placeholder for the indicator in the middle. And this is actually going to get a little bit difficult here. And we might not be able to use auto because that indicator has to be fixed. So the bottom auto, let's give it a fixed size right away because it's not going to work because I can't put the indicator in the pages and I can't grab the size of the indicator outside of the pages. So we're going to have 50 and text value equals, what did I say called this thing? I actually just called it text. And behind this image, you'll notice behind the image we also have the title of it. So the first column is actually going to be, or the first item is going to be a panel, and it's also going to have text. Text value equals, and I think I called it name, name. And it had a really big font size. I just tried 35 at first. And the bottom actually had a relatively larger font size. So actually, we'll see what that is. That's the whole purpose of having preview. You can just quickly check the stuff. Yep, it's really a shirt, but I have it in the wrong location. And why did it go up there? So we have a panel. It has the logo here, and then we have a page control. Ah, because there's no... I don't know how I wanted to lay this out. This was... Am I doing a grid there as well? Mm-hmm.
probably just put this whole thing at the top as well. You can dock a dock panel at the top. There's a lot of options here, and it's sometimes not easy to decide what you want to do. And we'll just put the page control on the bottom one, or we'll leave the panel for it. Just so we have a bit of control, and that would be where the class goes. And I'm going to increase this window size. I don't know why it keeps getting small on me. Probably whenever I close the thing. Okay, so we've got it all packed down in the bottom, which is not good. Why is it doing that is the question. This should have taken up the whole screen. Page, page control, client, client image. So you can 10 times debug these things by just putting a color on them. See, where is that panel? So that panel is the correct one. That's still the correct size. And these pages are probably in the wrong place then, AF. No, that's also the right size, so my grid is somehow wrong. What did I do wrong with my grid? Um, panel, panel, text. There's three rows, I have three items. Column count equals one. What is this color here? What do we have here? Oh, that's weird. Why is this all overlaid on top of each other? Panel, panel. Sometimes I have to debug things. So that's in the middle. <clears throat> I'm not clear on why this isn't filling up the whole thing. Let's take this height off. Oops. Now I'm trying to think why, what happened to my grid here? Something a bit unusual. We have the actual scrolling, but obviously that's not what we want. <clears throat> it's something very simple. I know it's something simple here. Oh yeah, my star. This is a weighting. It doesn't mean everything. It has to be a weight, like one star. Sorry about that. Because you can have two star and then one star here to give proportional weighting. And I just forgot my star. And, okay, so we have that. We can get rid of the silly color now. We have the debugging done. And the shirt's not really in a great place. The panel, we have the image, so we don't need the height in the image. It's going to take up that whole area there. So now it takes up that whole area, which we may not want it to do. Probably want to put it a generous margin on here. And I don't know from the design for sure what we want. We'll just try to emulate it at 50. And how do they show the text in the background? It's always on the top. Now we might have a problem here because this text is designed around the flatness of the cars. So when we have articles that are tall, it's going to sit behind and there's not that much we can do about it. But it's certainly bigger than that. Alignment equals top center. At least we have that, and we can put it a bit further down, margin with 0, 20. Let's stick it behind the stuff. So at least we kind of have where it is. And this is also a bold font. Well, I use a different, different font. I think that looks like some sort of impact font or something. And its color is somewhat transparent. Not too much. Uh, well, that's very transparent. Maybe it's more of a gray transparency. Obviously, if you had the source files for that, you could just go into the source file and figure out what it is, but that looks very similar. They have a darker background as well. I should have left this darker. I was concerned when I first made it that it'd be too dark, so I made it a bit brighter. And now with this panel here, we don't need a color on. And we're going to put the same thing, text wrapping equals wrap on here, alignment, text alignment. So we're going to center in the area. Now it looks like something's missing because we have a missing indicator. Now 
Now we, we the bottom thing you want to kind of force it to wrap and you don't want it to get too wide. The safe area, that's a good question, IM codes, and um, it's actually a branch I'm working on right now. The current FUSA apps will just be outside of the safe area. That's just how it happens on the phone. And the new ones you'll be able to draw inside there as well. And that's something a feature I'm working on right now to draw inside these safe areas. And you basically, the user will have control. In the client panel, the client panel by default will basically exclude you from the safe area, but then I'll give you variables that you can say draw in the safe area. And I'm looking at the exact API, how it works soon. And it shouldn't take too long, but we'll figure it out. The biggest problem I'm having now is in the old iPhone models, the little in-call status bar that comes down, and there appears to be no way to get rid of that or to adjust for its size, and something I have to fix now. Okay, so back to this text here, we can actually put a max width here too. Because our width has a fixed font, and we don't want it to be too big, we want to see some scrolling. And so font size of 50, we're going to have to put it a bit bigger here, of course, to fit the text in. And so we have that. And we actually have some more space in the bottom. There's supposed to be some spacing there. We're getting our stuff's a little bit too close together from the top and the bottom. So let's give the whole thing a little bit of a margin. Doesn't need margins on the edge. We'll give them the top and bottom. There we go. So we're getting a bit closer. Obviously we have different products, different colors. And we have a shoe and a boots. And the text is even bigger there, I notice. So font size, let's make it even bigger. And that'll make that even more apparent. Show it size boots, shoe. And I, I don't know what the right way to height set this up. Like based on our current products, we should have it higher, but we have a shoe that's not the same size. So without knowing the size of these things, it's gonna be very hard to get that background, you know, directly in the right place. Okay, now we have something a little weird. We want a page indicator in the middle now. Page indicators, these little dots here, are not part of the pages themselves. But they're in this design, they're interlaid in that pattern. And so we have these kind of fixed spaces here on this grid. So what we can do on the exact same control, the page control, we can put a page indicator. Layer equals overlay. Let's throw it in the overlay. That just goes on top of the stuff, and it's actually a separate layer for clicking and stuff. It's it's you don't use it often, but I tend to use it in this case where it logically makes sense. And this page control needs a name. We'll call it product nav. Because a page indicator needs to know which navigation it is, product nav. And by default, this should use dots. All right, and we didn't put anywhere, we put it in overlay. And we need to put it in the correct location now. Alignment equals bottom center, it's at the bottom. Margin equals, because I'm putting it relative to the bottom, so we have a fixed size there and not from the top. So I don't know what the size of the top is, so I have to make it relative to the bottom. And the bottom size is going to be 60. Okay, and that sticks it there. We probably looks like we want it higher up, taking count of the spacing there, and maybe even higher, which means That's a bit tiny, so we'll have to see when we add it there. It might it might be pushed up. But now at least we have their basic design. And you notice now it stays in place as we move around. And that's what we wanted. We wanted it to stay in place as we move around. If we do an additional, we have to add font awesome. We can do that a little bit later to actually get the little details of it going left and right. Okay. Now, we have this basic parallax navigation, and, and we'll never get it exact, but you notice the bottom thing comes in the fastest, and the top ones come in a bit slower. So we can give these all names, and we're gonna have something like this. Activating animation, actually let's do entering animation. Entering animation. And I do apologize for these names again. I've wanted them changed for a while. Just remember when you see entering animation, this is like the front animation and exiting animation is the back. Things have a natural ordering to them that when they're stacked from top and bottom in the file, like up here, these things in the top here are in the front 
in front animation says, well, what happens when you put it in the front? And exit animation says, what happens when you put it in back? So they should really be called back and front animation. And we're going to give these little bits names inside here so we can move them around. Let's do with the text at the bottom first. UX name equals, let's just call it text. In the entering animation, we're going to move the target as text because we're, tar we're targeting something else, text. X equals 1 relative to equals parent size. Now we don't give it a duration because the animation itself, page control, will control the animation. And we might have to start playing with it. And so exiting animation, so this is actually minus one, and then exiting animation is one. Okay, and let's see if this actually does what I want. So now you can see as I scroll that, whoops, it kind of has its extra distance that it goes. Okay. My mouse is not cooperating today. Maybe I should put the buttons on so I don't have to always do it this track. But you notice it's controlled by the mouse. So as I scroll, it, it, it stays in sync with the actual scrolling animation. And now what we have is the other things that go a bit slower. Okay. And so let's put the same thing for the title text. I'll just call it name here, it's simple enough. Move target equals name. And it's also gonna go basically one relative to. But this is the problem when you don't have a duration. Well, how do I make this one take longer? Or how can I make it take slower or something? So we might wanna say, well, let's put it minus two and then we can play with the easing instead. And which one do we want? I think we want cubic out. I'll just play with these at random. Cubic out. Uh-oh. It's about something wrong. It's really hard for you to see the screen is really small here. There's nothing named name. There's nothing named name. Well, there's something named name. Oh, that's the problem. Capital N. So notice the shirt goes away really fast. That may be too fast though, actually. But you're saying, well, okay, so that's too fast, but you also say, well, it's not, I want it to arrive after this other one. Now, I'm wondering if I can actually do that. These things set up timelines. And without a duration, this takes the whole duration of it. And you can make an artificial duration here. You can say, even though this is gonna be controlled by the progress bar, you can still stick durations on these things. So you could, for example, say this is duration one, and this is duration equals two. And this will only apply to exit though. Come on, go. Oh. All right, yeah, I don't think we can see it well enough though. Or you can stick a delay so you can stick a delay of one instead, delay of one and duration of one. That should work. And I'm gonna make them not go quite as far. Let's just make them go one, but they can go later. And I should stick the delay up here as well. And you can see it's sort of delayed as it comes in. Although not quite, I'm not quite satisfied with the effect. I'm not quite sure I have it right. But let's go with it for now. This will be minus two and this will be duration equals one. This is delay equals one, duration equals one. 
Now what I want to do, please, I'm, I'm tired of scrolling back and forth in here. <laughs> I'm going to put the little buttons on here. And for that, we're going to put the font awesome font in here. Because I know they have little arrows and stuff. So let's add that. I'm just going to throw it in the command lines because I'm used to the command line. I'll make this really big, though. Or how do I do that? There we go. Oh, not that big, though. This silly terminal, when you increase the font size, it assumes you don't want, it assumes you want to increase the window as well, which isn't necessarily the case. User slash fuse demos, and we're calling this page. So you have an assets directory. Now, in the other one I did, I put, I'm just going to copy from wherever I have it. Animation Explorer assets has font awesome, so we'll copy it from there. And then we can create a font here. Font, actually I've forgotten how we did that. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure it's font file equals assets. Font awesome.ttf. We'll just call it font awesome. And in the page indicator, now we're gonna play with the page indicator and we're going to put a different panel here, so instead of the page indicator being directly in the panel, we're going to stick it on here. Oops. And actually make this a stack panel. So we can lay out several items horizontally. And we'll stick the page indicator in there. And then we're going to have a button going to the left. I'll just use a quick arrow for now before we get the font awesome there. Just so we can see what this looks like quickly. Value equals greater than. Did I save it? Okay. No, tip me ears. Oh, I put the I forgot to move the navigation down. That's actually part of the page indicator. Hello Aldous, welcome in. No problem. I was debugging iOS this morning as well. Seems to be what one does in iOS. You spend a few moments programming, about 80 minutes debugging. File does not exist. Font awesome, probably because it's an OTF file. Okay. So for those who join us, we're trying to recreate this thing I saw online on Dribbble. And I gave the guy's name before, I just give it again. So this is from Ali Bayer. It's the... Okay, in terms of UX, they have an issue that you can't actually see. There it is, the Volkswagen. So I didn't want to copy the name of Volkswagen, so it's Volkswagen. And he's showing off the demo, and that's we're just trying to recreate. Not just exactly, but some of the parallax effects he's doing. And so we have this, and we have these little buttons. And let me go over the Font Awesome site now so we can actually get those buttons. Font Awesome. Though honestly, for little arrows, we could use Unicode. And Unicode is replacing a lot of these little things like Font Awesome, except I still like to show it. So at least you can see how you embed your own fonts. And they have additional icons there. It's always going to be, a, you're always going to want to have your own font somewhere. So what do we have? We're going to have arrows. What type of arrow do we want? It's actually not an arrow. What does he call these things? Carrots or something? Angle. Angle. So angle right. This looks like a fat angle right. Um, we probably want the black one. Because we can just change the color of it if we want to. Or are those actually different colors? Those are probably just the same color. Uh, all right. No, what's the code for this? F10F. I just put my laptop on the floor. It's getting angry with its fan. Let's hope I don't lose the screen. All right, hope you can still see me. So this is our arrow. And we're just gonna stick that to the program because it's using a custom space. You don't really have a choice but to use the symbols. And number X V. And that'll give us a different arrow. Oh yeah, and you notice it's a little box over here. 
because this is a custom Unicode range, it's a good indication because we never specified the font. Font, awesome. And that font there's, and I put it on the wrong side. Wonderful. Okay, and so there's going to be another angle left as well. And where did, where did it go? Oh, it's one of these pages. For people doing UX for web pages, notice this error you j that just happened now. It's a really annoying one. I pressed back, and where I was wasn't there because it's a dynamically loading page. And then I'm not in the right place. Okay. Do, 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 do. F104. Just copy that as well. Oh, I guess you can just change the four here. And what I probably want to do though, instead of sticking the text directly, because text has this issue that it's a very small clickable area, it's just the size we want. And actually, I'm going to put a padding on here, padding of 10 and 5, and hit test mode equals local bounds. What I'm doing is I'm making this bigger than it actually is. <clears throat> this is very important by mobile that you don't necessarily want to sacrifice the visual aesthetics just for a bigger hit test. So what you can do is you can add additional bounds and they say, look, there's more area hittable here than what you actually see. Because the user's going to target that area anyways. And assuming you're going to make an error, local bounds, okay. So the user's going to target this area. They're going to try and press this thing. And normally it'd be really hard to hit, but since we have a relatively big padding around it, we should be able to get it. It should be big enough. I mean, we we'll probably want to create this font size here anyways, because it's still quite small, and in the original it's quite big. And we'll have to adapt those dots later, but we'll show you how to do it a bit later. And when we click this, this is where it gets a little bit weird. What do we want to do? Clicked. And again, here comes the go back and go forward. Go back literally means if you have a stack of pages, go to the one that's behind it. And go forward means go to the one in the front. For a page control, there's no history, so it doesn't apply to that. So we're gonna, so this is the leftmost one. This one means go forward. And this one over here, clicks means go backwards. I think it's just called go back though. But we don't have a context of a navigation, so we're going to stick it here, product nav. And that applies to this whole tree. Unfortunately, there's an open request that page indicator still requires that navigation. It doesn't look through the tree, and that's just an old issue that's never bothered anyone enough for us to fix yet. Okay, so hopefully if I did that right, I can click here now, and we get to the other page. And our text is not, the one text doesn't appear to be animating now. Which is really kind of weird. So I screwed something up there. Let's just get rid of the durations again. Let's just go back to having the way it was. And we'll come back and fix that. Let's get all the basics done first and then come back and do that. There are ways to do it, I just want to make sure it's all working first. And I probably took one too many brackets out. Okay. Okay, so now we have that working as well. And we don't really have to change the product because the page control itself does the scrolling. It's just a matter of how precisely do we need to mimic this. The car is the thing that comes kind of first. Well, the text comes and the car and this gets really tricky. He's got some bounce and there's multiple effects happening there, but I'm just gonna worry about the basic effect now. If you really have to do that bounce when he swipes back very quickly, then there is a way to do it, but it starts getting a bit more complicated with using the attract function. And so let's move on to the other effect now. Let's try to, let's add the little icons on the top just for completeness. And then we're gonna add, so these two icons, and then we'll do the background color. You notice the color changes here. So is this too small still? I think those arrows are still too small. He has really large arrows. 
let's put some really large arrows there. And what else do I see? The our logo is still a tad bit bigger, but that's okay. Okay, so we have bigger. That works a bit bigger now. We have that and we have color, the background coloring. Now how do we do background coloring? There's this animation he has. Let me show you how to do coloring first, just without the animation. And well we can not quite the animation. So we're gonna have to give each of these a color. And the colors are simply an array from JavaScript. I think you can also put a string here if you prefer this notation. Since I'm in JavaScript, oh, I'll just do it that way. You can also use an array of four values. And what color is our shirt? In the example, it lines up with that. Unfortunately, our shirt is kind of black. So let's just give it a very bluey color. And we'll be using the feature where we tint the color of the image in the background. And the boots are... Whatever this color is, we'd like to have this color or maybe the red. We'll take that deep red there. That might get too dark, but let's go for that way. 833, just guess some colors here. I don't have a little color picker on my desktop. I mean... <laughs> I usually work in the code, so you probably have a color pick and pick it and or just do another way to get background is just Gaussian blur this until it's one color and that's often a decent color, or at least a starting point. And or just use the whole thing as a background. I've seen that in some sites where they just take this image and stick it in the background too. Extremely blurred. And that can also work. And the last one here was a shoe. And it's also got a boring color, so the original images I had were all black, and I actually went to find some more which were subdued, but not just all black. And I don't know which color to give this one. It's not going to be very impressive, so let's just give it a very basic color. These are all going to be very dark, though. That's my only concern. So we save the color. Now, we have this image here, this fill, and this is the main page. I'm giving it a name now. It's back image. And the color here is actually a tint. It's a tinted color. And we're going to change that color while the item is active. Activating animation. This is a different view of exiting and entering. It means as I'm going to the active area, do something instead. And this was back image, yeah. Uh oh, what did I do? And we just give it a new color. And well, it should have worked. There we go. All right, so this is really dark. But as we change pages, you'll notice it changes colors. So you have a minimal effect. And you can totally see that some of my things are cut against a white background. And his example is relatively dark, but we don't have that same contrast. So we should be brighter at least. Oh, some of them are brighter. So let's just increase the color's brightness a little bit because that's pretty bad for 4A. My very rough improved coloring background. And just leave the shoe gray. Okay. And what color is this text? This text is white. Now, our default text color appears to be a gray, not a white which means we should probably fix that, and that's why our text doesn't show up so much. So let's go and set all our text colors to white. And this is where you might want to actually set a resource. You're going to say, look, I don't want to change it all the time. So UX, yeah, no, uh, global. Color for UX value, make this white. And we'll just put this wherever there's text. The legal mumbo jumbo, we're going to leave it legally a little less colorful. And where else do we have text? We have text discover. 
color equals color four. And then just save this one here. You notice that text color is now that. And that's surprisingly blue. I don't like it. I don't like that that blue. There we go. Color four and select article is going to be that color as well. Color equals color four. So we can change it one place if we have to. The color shirt still looks correct because we did that in the right place. Although, was it a bit brighter? No, it's actually really not. It's a bit more transparent though in the original. Color equals color four. <clears throat> And down here as well, color equals color four. You can also create a class that wraps your text. If you want to apply it the same color, same style everywhere, you can just use a cast. But since all our text is very specific and very different, it's not really, okay, so now we have that. And so we have the text and we have the colors. And you notice how the background transitions colors? When you use a change like this, there will be multiple change animators applying to the background at the same time. The one coming in, the one going out are both trying to affect the color. The animation system will try to merge that. It'll take the combination. In this case, by default, yeah, it's gonna, I think it does a lerp. It does so linear interpolation, combines them, or no, it does a weighting. And, and so it'll compete and they'll change colors across. It doesn't convert back to the default color. It's gonna convert straight across, but you might see an intermediate step. Okay, so I say we have a different outline here. That's fine. We have the basic. So let's just go to the top and let's add the things that make it look like an app as well. We'll add the little menu icon up there and that's in our top one there. And text alignment equals left, color equals color for value equals and font equals font awesome. And we'll just go grab the hamburger icon as well. I should stop calling. And you see, this is again that UX issue. It kind of bounces around. I really hate that in websites. And I think they call it menu. Uh, no, you can't search. Yeah, again, another thing about such things is because I can't, because it's not actually there, I can't actually search the page. They had a better accessibility before I found. I can't even find it anymore. That's weird. Um, all right, so they're, they're ex whatever website change they made is defeating them because I can't even find that icon anymore. Is that's why I thought I tried burger as well. It's just a menu. Well, that's really weird. They they screwed something up because I know there's one in there. I used it all the time. Where's uh, is there interfaces? Bars. Now it's just called. Now I'm pretty sure they used called menu or something. They had alternate names before. I thought. Now curiously, it's showing you the actual definitions of SVG. You could import paths directly into Fuse using the path command and give it an SVG path if you want. That might be preferable if you only have like a couple items from Font Awesome you want. There's no point in taking the whole font. You can actually just copy the paths out of it if you wanted or, or just make your own. That's also totally acceptable. <laughs> okay, so let's go and find bars and number X. Okay, and we also need search. We gotta guess the name of search now and go back to their gallery. Super size in your fries, wonderful. Search. Take search. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to copy the other one because it's exactly, virtually exactly the same. And this is where I say you might want to make classes if you have left and right, but again, when I just have two of them, yeah, I don't know. Although, if, you, if you're working on the aesthetics and you're doing this interactively, you probably want the class just for the sake of sanity that every time you change the color here, you're like, oh, why didn't the left one change? So let's do that for the purpose of menu text, just for clarity here, color four. And so now we have menu text. So this is menu text as well. It's going to have alignment center. We don't have to put the color four in all of it. This is alignment equals right. Don't need the color. Y equals F0 to 2, and it has a font on it. Get rid of the color. Okay, and oh, I've got to change those to menu text. And I notice we're going to need some padding on here as well. Padding equals 5, 2. Now, I always find this a little bit counterintuitive on phones. Is that the way spacing works is really funny is that a phone has a lot more height than it has width. Yet, typically by padding, you end up making the width padding more than the height padding. And this has a lot to do with the way we perceive text. Just the spacing needs to be more in the, verti in the horizontal than in the vertical. But it's a, it's a curiosity, though, that because the phones are high, but you pad it less in that direction. Now, let's see how big he had these things originally. Ours are a bit small, so we're going to make them a bit bigger. And this is where we're happy to have this menu text, because now I can say font size and make the whole menu bar bigger. And that starts to look a bit better. But you notice the icons are actually even bigger. So you might want to even create yet another class, menu text. You should be able to write from this menu icon. Font size equals 22, and we'll make the original size back to 19. And we'll say font awesome, because that's the font it's using. So now we can use menu icon here instead and take off this font. Okay, and so now that text is a bit bigger. Okay, and so we have the three parts. They scroll, and when you scroll around, they scroll around as well. And if you look back at the example here, this, if these buttons are the only way you can scroll, you can probably, you can do the car this way. But because we have a page control, this is a very interesting point for usability is that you should have one item, and in this case, this one should map to where the person's finger is. And that's why I'm not going to actually change this, even though it doesn't match the design is that you can't have everything move in a different space because if the user starts swiping and it doesn't match what their finger's doing, they'll get confused. It'll, it'll screw up their perception of what's happening. So if we leave the main product to match the finger speed and then just swing the text in and out, I think that'll be sufficient for UX. It, it maintains the spirit of the design but keeps the UX up of tracking the user's finger. Okay, so we have that, and we have the select article model. Obviously, you'd want to match the fonts if you're doing this, because this font down here, I don't even know what default font we're using. We have bold and stuff, not a lot. And the text at the bottom is perhaps a little bit too dark. Where did I even put that? The boilerplate. Let's actually give it a bit of color. Color equals... Now, I'm going to have to go all the way then, I guess. R D D D. There we go. Um, it's just enough to still look white. I don't want to drag. The, the reason you might want to do is you don't want to drag the user's attention away from it. And you can choose yourself, but I find this select article here, that might be a bit too dominant as well. If the user's at this page, they should know what they're doing, like why they're here. Um, but it's sometimes good to at least have some indication select an article. The title at the top is a bit unusual and that whole bar at the top should have padding as well. I'm actually going to increase this too. 
three. Okay. Okay. And <coughs> that's that's a base. The one thing we're missing now is gather than the exact timing of the transition, but I showed you the basics. You can go play with the transition timing on your own. Um, we want these to be white. Now, how do we do that? We haven't customized them at all yet. We've done just a basic page indicator. And for this, you can actually do a template. And we're going to do a circle. And, and the template is called dot. Now, this is just history, why we just didn't accept any template, but the template has to have a name, and dot was the dots for it. And the dot behaves like a page. So the color is going to be MFF, mainly transparent. It's going to have a name, dot. Actually, it takes the name dot from the template, if I recall. And while active, actually, again, we'll do this activating animation. Yeah, I was like, kind of went over the adaptive design initially that in landscape, this is probably going to be pretty bad. This is one you're probably going to want to lock it. And, right, because if I take this, like ours will, yeah, landscape, it fails. It's just not something you want to do. Um, well, that'd be an interesting exercise for the next episode. Could we actually convert this design to actually work in landscape? What would that even mean? We can actually do this. Well, let's get this stuff, let's get this thing done first and then see if we can convert this to landscape. It might be a bit weird, but I think we can do it. I have to be a bit clever, but because <clears throat> all this is absolutely right. Even if you design for phone like this, if you want it in the tablet, you should, you should support landscape. And if you don't want to support landscape, lock the phone to portrait mode. It's an option in the files. Like if you, if you really don't have the resource to say, hey, look, we just did this. We don't want to do another mode. Then at least lock the phone so that when they rotate it, it it'll stick in the one mode. Obviously, my resizing here, you can't lock. But on the actual phone, you can lock it so you can't rotate it. And you may want to account for different sizes as well. And there's many ways to do that. So like the text and stuff, you have to be careful about that. The text should be different sizes and mainly those boots in the middle and many options. We have many things like to do adapter results, but let me do the indicators first, but maybe we should take an episode then to say how to make this to be actually responsive and work on different designs. That's a good idea. All right, so activating animation, we want to change. This is for the dots, dot, dot color, and they become fully active. This is the only thing we actually need to, okay, we're going to need a width on these. Yeah. So now this is how we can change the size as well. And those are pretty close together. It's not what we want. So we're going to give them a margin as well. A margin of 10. Let's see how far they apart. Now you can control the spacing and everything. Once you start doing your own indicators, you have a lot more control. But we always we usually have a default for most things because otherwise you don't see what's going on and you just get lost. So now we have a really big thing. And his dots are slightly smaller. But we're close enough and let's add one more product because if we're doing these dots we should actually have a bit more products because we need more dots I prepared a few more pictures now we're going to have a hat text I'll think of that in a second um, Product hat.png. Color, I've forgotten what color the hat is. Um, I'm just going to try and make it based on the other ones. If I do BB8 or something. Text, yeah. I don't know. It's a hat. What more do you want? There we go. So we have one more hat, and let's put another item as well. We have a teddy as well. Teddy. Just do six of these. Dents. Cuddly for lonely forest nights. I 
remember what color he was either. So let's assume he was a bit brighter. Um, uh, I just do this for now. Nobody wants a green background, so I'll just do that. And I got an error here somewhere. Something went wrong. Probably a compilation of jet script error. Okay, what did I do wrong? Uh, somewhere in the main view I screwed something up. No, I think I'm just going to refresh it. What? This is weird. I can't understand what my error is. Name cannot begin with the probably quote character. So what did I do wrong? Name, 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 name. What's working? Did I screw something up here? Hat, hat, what do you want? Uh, that should have been fine. I don't know what's going wrong here. I'm gonna rebuild just to make sure it's not just mixed up the code. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, the building everything takes a bit longer because I'm doing the streaming from the same computer and the MacBooks are not really fully capable of doing that. <laughs> They're a bit slow. So I think it just got stuck, yeah. And we have a hat. The color seems okay for the hat. Yeah, we have a teddy. Teddy probably wants a brighter color. But okay, it doesn't matter. I just need to I just want to see a change of color. But maybe more of a contrast. Let's make the hat even slightly bigger. And the teddy bear should be, I don't know, the teddy bear should be slightly warmer. Because I wanted to see the contrast in the back. There we go, that should be enough. And, and the back change is actually kind of subtle. <clears throat> But if you were doing the design of these products, it's actually enough of a difference to make the whole thing stand out and, and approach the user slightly differently. <clears throat> you could also change the color of the logo if you really wanted, but most companies would be like, no, no, you can't touch that. <laughs> but if you change it slightly so they didn't notice, they might be okay with it. All right. So we can swipe this over as well. And we have little bars there. Are they more dominant here? Okay. They look to have about the same level of opacity. The reason his look more dominant is because they have this little bar going between them. Now, whew, how can we do that? There is a way to do this. I haven't done it in a while. Page progress, something about page progress. We can know what page the thing is on and Or we can... Does he have a little dot that even moves? That's interesting. How does he do that? We did that before. I've done that a lot of times. I've forgotten to do it. You can actually make a dot that moves. Our dot doesn't move. Which kind of highlights. And... Aha! I see why there is it. Is his eyes are highlighted up to the active one. And you can actually do that as well. And this is where you can split this animation here. So our activating animation, you can also say entering animation. Because this means the ones in the front, because the logical pages, can also change the dot color. Dot dot color to be FFF. And that'll keep them all highlighted that way. So now as we go across, they all stay highlighted. I'm not entirely certain of this design why, but you know, maybe it shows a little roadmap. And 
I'm going to make the dot color a little bit more transparent by default because I don't see the contrast well enough. And now we want to try and find a way to get a bar on here. How can we do that? Um, all right, there's how did we do this? All this probably, so I've even done this before. <laughs> I've done this numerous times and I forgot. This is one of the ones I did a long, long time ago on the layout. How do I actually get that bar to go across? And in the page engineer, we stick something in the background, first of all. This is gonna be a rectangle. Layer equals background. Alignment equals left. So center left. Height equals probably three. Color equals really colorful. And the width is now the question. What do we set the width to? Yeah, that's what I have to do. Page control progress. But I want to make it relative, so I want to have... Actually, okay, so we're going to do that. We have... So you're not going to see this now when I save it because it's hidden. It has no width. Um, what was the progress again? Property, I think it was page progress. Product nav dot page progress times 10%. Just something quickly to test this. And what failed down here? Expression cannot be empty, that's fine. Uh, property page nav, product nav. And I need the name of it. What's the name of the thing? Product nav. I thought page progress was it. Page progress? Width should be fine. Ah, yeah, the scale was the way we used to do it, but since we have expressions, progress should also work. Um, let's check the docs. I don't know if it's in there or not. The scale is the way if you have individual pages. When you have dynamic pages, it gets a bit interesting because we don't know what the first page is. So we don't know where to set it. Page control. And I should act I should actually expose some more values to do it. Oh, we have active index though. But that won't be interactive though. That'll just be like fixed as it steps across. Page progress change, page history, page count. There's actually more here than what's shown in the docs, unfortunately. There's an avid navigation element somewhere. <laughs> there's there's a navigation item I know because I did it that but it's not showing up here. I might have to cheat and just look at the actual source code for a moment here. So excuse me for a moment while I go jump into the source code for this because I'm pretty sure there's a property there and I don't know why it's not appearing in the docs. Source view controls. Navigation. What ordering is this? Page control, come on, page control. And it implements all these things from. Sorry, it's not that one. That's weird. Let's try navigation control. I won't spend too 
I, I won't spend too long on this, but if I can see it quickly, otherwise I'll go. These are all the interface, active page change, history change, navigated, state change. Page progress changed. <clears throat> this is referring to it, but I don't know if the page project is actually open and available. Page progress is here. We have a page progress. I don't know if it's exposed. I might put this on my list. There are other ways to do this. I can't think of it right now. And trying to think of how we could do this active index in a cheap way for now. We won't get the exact correct animation. Actually, maybe I should stick some width in first to see if it's actually working at all. Maybe I just have nothing here. Yeah, that would be an issue too that I can't see it at all. <laughs> but it should definitely change that first. And page indicator, maybe I should stick it in. Why is it not showing up? Ho hum ho hum. Am I going to figure out why it's not showing up at all? Why is it getting mad at me now? Oh, because I took the width away. Okay, so we have it there, but it's way off. This is stack panel, and so let's put the page indicator inside a panel. I think it's a deal with the page indicator that it might be one of the old controls, that it doesn't accept two items in it. It doesn't accept two children, so it accepts only the template, and the other ones aren't there. Okay, and the margin is 10, so we're going to have to stick a margin here as 10 as well to get it to line up. But now we need to get the width. Maybe the other width works now. We don't know. Property product nav dot page progress. Oops. No, it's complaining about something, of course. It's not have page projects. Yeah, okay, that's fine. There's nothing named products. Well, yeah, product name is the problem, not product now. So we have index, and it doesn't go far enough, of course. I want to see if I can get. Sorry, let me check product page progress again. I thought this was available. Okay, so page project isn't available. So we're going to do it kind of cheap. We're going to say active index divided by count, and these are products. Don't know how many products we have times 100%. Why is it not like that? Not sure what it's complaining about now. We have some weird things with expressions sometimes. Uh, I thought I had count. Positive count is a function, or maybe it's length. Count, well, count. Oh, do we never actually expose it as a function? I have to check. I can't quite show so. I'm just going to cheat for a second. I'm going to say divided by six because that's how many products we have. And you can actually expose this in JavaScript as well a different way. And, okay, we're not six, we need to have five. Why is it not liking me? The width should be the same as the other one, width, height, page, margin because this has a margin of 10 and I'd have to have get sizes lined up here 
Okay, this is a margin of 10. We're going to say... All right, because we're missing 10 width. It's not quite wide enough to get that full distance. Because these other ones have a margin of 10. So let's do it this way. Let's put a right margin on them of 10 instead. It's going to offset them though. Well, that wasn't good. That was a height margin. So it's still not quite lined up. Um, I just had to think of the calculation to the lineup. <laughs> So I'm lining these up in a page indicator, and they're spaced so they each have 10 to the right, and that's fine. So this has no margin then, and this keeps the same size as the other one. Okay, and I think that's the right size now. It's not. It's not a perfect animation. But it works. And I have to look up how we did it before with the dynamic ones. And I might just expose an additional property. And these ones, to do these things would be really easier with a lot of extra, just a few extra properties saying what page you're on. And I think we have the wrong width here. Okay, it's, it's really thin that one. So it's a bit thinner. And here's something I'm gonna show you. So snap two pixels equals false. When you're doing these small animations, you should generally do snap to pixels equals false if they're tiny, so it doesn't try and align them on pixel boundaries, which really screws up the centering on small items. And you notice now that we're a bit off-centered though, because I have the margin here of 10, and so we're gonna stick a padding of 10 on the other side here just to accommodate that. And padding, okay. And this is because I want each of these items to be the same size and be left aligned, which makes it easier to line up the rectangle and so this just balances off, so it looks like it's centered again still. And whoops, what did I do? And this should not be layer equals background now, this is just there. Okay, sorry. And something doesn't quite look right about it. Does look to be about the right size though. He just has more items. But I should really provide more ways to work with the navigation. I'm working on edge navigation right now to modernize it, but this at least gives you something. It's not the perfect animation. If you combine this with an attract function, it would actually make it animated, though it wouldn't follow the navigation. The one thing we haven't done, so I've accounted for most of it, the one thing we haven't done is that when he switches pages, you know, as it goes from top to bottom, the color change, And that, if you look at it, it's actually going up and down, which would actually be possible. But I don't know if it's worth the effort right now. So I think as we've done this long enough, I think we have this, going to leave it at this. And one of the things you're going to say, but how can you get the same background up above here on an app because your contents can be trapped in here? And that's something we've taken care of in navigation before, is you can cheat if you want to have a background per page that's over the whole thing. You can actually just share a common class which recreates the top part in every page and then completely control on them. I think this covers it for now though. This is what I wanted to cover. We did the basic code. I can check this in then. And we showed how the basic parallax, these things have different speeds on them as they come in and out. And they have different easings on them so you can control the relative speed. And they tie to the actual mouse movement. We said that's important. Our text doesn't quite line up as well as theirs because we have different sized items. I just took some random ones. Everything else looks to be about right. Not the same fonts, obviously not quite the same icons. And the text at the bottom, I don't have the, I don't have the backgrounds lined up perfectly. But this gives a basic product showcase. 
and this might be like your articles in a month or something. If you had an app and you're selling to users, then I might quickly swip to here's your products for you, here's five items, would you like one of them? And you click on it to go into your basket or something like that. That might be an actually interesting way to finish this app, but I won't do that now. Um, so unless there's no questions, I think I'm going to finish this off right now. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, subscribe to me on Twitch, like my stuff on YouTube. It helps get the word out a bit. And if you do have questions that come up, feel free to ask on the Slack community channel or go to the forums and ask in the forums and we'll be sure to get your answer. In the meantime, I'm going to take a look at the navigation stuff and see if I can expose some more values to make it even more fun. It should be simple. So thank you very much for watching. I had fun and I'll push this code up to Git and put it in the description. Thank you.